Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. So as you say, I'm back home. The internet did not cooperate yesterday on my group coaching call. I've got another one in 30 minutes and two more tomorrow. And I really didn't want to have a couple of more uh, group coaching calls be interrupted. Now I was able to get back on and we got most of it done yesterday, but uh, it was a little bit frustrating for me and the participants. So I figured I'd come home where the internet's stable. Lake life. So today I wanted to talk about this concept of have patience. There is no light switch. Get to that in a minute. Beautiful. I'm glad 20 minutes ago Tractor Boy was blowing a leaf blower, so I'm glad he stopped. If he starts up in the middle of this, you're going to see me smack my head. <laughs> so let's, let's hope I get the next six to eight minutes free. All right. Have patience. There is no light switch. Easily, several times a week, I get people saying, how do I get the pain, to pain or symptoms to turn off now? Or, mornings are my toughest. What do I do to make sure it doesn't happen tomorrow? And my answer is, have patience. It's not a light switch, right? While there is no direct shortcut to turning things off like that, there are shortcuts. There are things you can do to influence that. And these are the concepts which I teach every single day here and in my group coaching. Um, there are shortcuts. Panic less, freak out less, move towards calm reassurance. Starts with the foundation, folks. What creates symptoms? The perception of danger, not actual danger. The symptoms aren't perceived. The symptoms are real, but they are caused by the brain perceiving danger. So it's the brain's false perception of misinformation that we're in danger in some way. We've got a bad body part. We've got this medical diagnosis, this medical label we've been given. Our own experience says, when I do this, it hurts, or when I do that, my symptoms flare. And that creates this whole setup of a fear pain loop or a fear symptom loop. And it can be challenging to get out of. But I will tell you, there is no light switch. If there was, I'd have it manufactured, patented, and I'd be an uber billionaire because everybody in the world would want to turn off my symptoms and pain light switch. But it's not there. But the next best thing is your ability to teach your own brain that I'm not in trouble and that it would be okay to turn off these symptoms. They're basically false alarms, right? False alarms. Pulling the smoke detector out of the kitchen because you burned some stuff on the stovetop does not put you in more danger because you turned off that false alarm. You've already determined no fire. Turning off the smoke detector, pulling it out, taking the battery out is not going to create more harm or danger. You're basically saying, I don't need to listen to this false alarm. Well, internally, we can do that. We can do that with our thinking with our emotional response to symptoms or pain. Look, we can freak out when symptoms are high. And we often do, that's a default. Because some of us are just shocked by how colorful things can be. Um, but I, I can guarantee you that nobody ever panicked enough or freaked out enough that their symptoms went away. I've just never seen it, right? Nobody ever got better by freaking out. So knowing this, like I do with certainty, that's not the solution. So even when symptoms are high, I'm gonna encourage you to relax your body, allow yourself to watch or observe your symptoms with curiosity. Say, wow, isn't that fascinating how my brain is tightening up here or hurting there or creating gastrointestinal problems, or reflux, or migraines, or tension, or pressure somewhere in our body. Fascinating. And if you can observe it, kind of step outside of your body and just watch. Say, wow, that's wild. And then you can 
logically and rationally say, well, I understand that those symptoms are not harm harming me. They feel like it, they seem like it, but they're really not. They're not causing damage, but they're really tough. But if you can observe from a standpoint of curiosity and then pay attention to this, what are my fear levels? What are my freak out levels? What are my, what's my doubt about when I get these symptoms? Do I doubt that my body's the problem? Or am I certain that my body's okay and this is just a false alarm screaming at me, right? Observe your doubt, your fear, your thinking, your worries, your catastrophic, you know, view of the future. Look, most often when I talk to people in the group coaching and they're saying, I'm really in a tough position, symptoms are way up here. I'll ask them, well, what's going on with your fear? What, what are you thinking? What's your thinking doing? And has your doubt grown recently? Inevitably, the doubt is high. You're starting to doubt, well, maybe this is not perceived danger symptoms or TMS. You're starting to doubt, can I get better? They're starting to question, I've been at this for a while, I'm not better yet, so this won't work. There's a lot of different things that people doubt. But the, that causes the fear to go up. And when the fear goes up, the brain goes, whoa, we're in trouble. Look at how scared Dan is. And the symptoms can crank up. And so it's our job not to go scrambling in the dark looking for a light switch. It's our job, hand on the heart. and know that you're going to be okay. Allow yourself to experience the symptoms at whatever level they are. You know, you're going to make it through the day. You've got a 100% track record of making it through every bad day. You'll make it through today. right? But just know deeply, I'm okay because I've done my homework. I've watched Dan's Fast Start playlist where I talk about the perception of danger is what creates symptoms or pains. I walk you through in the next video on that playlist. How to figure it out. Is this PDP.com? There are assessments. If it says TMS, if it says perceived danger is the cause, that's what it is, folks. Arguing that point and looking for all sorts of reasons why that does not apply to you keeps you in fear, keeps the doubt high. Why would you choose to do that when there's clear evidence that your brain's creating the symptoms? So there is no light switch, folks. But there is a fast start dansfaststart.com that's a free version if you would like help one-on-one -on -one with me in a group format but one-on-one -on -one, you will have a conversation with Dan um, so you can ask your questions you can share your struggles you can basically get coached live up to four times a week Monday at 9 a.m. Tuesday at 3 p.m. Wednesday at 1 p.m. or 7 p.m. these calls last up to three hours to make sure everybody's got time to be heard and get coached so that's like 16 to 18 sessions per month for 100 bucks which is ridiculous because it's like you know let's say 16 sessions it's like less than four bucks a session that you'd be paying and some people do attend most of them so it's ridiculously inexpensive i know that may sound like a lot of money especially if you're not working um but you get a free video course, which is worth three to four hundred dollars by itself, and you get that included in the membership. There's a wonderful Facebook group. You'll get support from a bunch of people who are just like you, going through a similar, similar story. So really consider it. Painfreeugroup.com, and in the description, um, on YouTube at least, there are links to the group. You can check it out. You can join there and you can show up as early as today, which is Wednesday. I have calls. Now, if you're in Europe, you're usually five hours ahead. So my one o'clock session would be six o'clock your time. My seven o'clock session, probably not great. That'd be like midnight. Um, but Monday at nine in the morning would probably be two in the afternoon for you. Tuesday at 3 p.m. would be 8 p.m. your time in Europe in most of Europe, depending on where you are. So the times do fit for folks in Europe. Uh, the times listed at painfreeugroup.com 
or New York City time zone. So just add whatever the time difference is for where you are or subtract if you're out on the west coast of the U.S. So I'm going to wrap this up here. There is no light switch. Have patience. But you can influence things dramatically by how you respond to your symptoms. Expect the best. Respond as calmly as possible. But it takes consistency. Consistency is key here, folks. You can't expect to do this work once and boom, tomorrow you're good. It takes consistency over time to teach the brain that you're okay. Nobody can learn anything overnight. Imagine a baby saying, hey, I got up, took a step and fell on my butt. How do I make sure that doesn't happen tomorrow? There's no way. You just can't do it. So I'm going to wrap this up here. All right, folks, love you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.